Hi friends, in today's video, we are going to explore a famous .com era company, Pets.com, that dug its own grave until it ultimately died. Pets.com was an online pet supply retailer that became a household name in the late 1990s thanks to its catchy slogan because pets can't drive. and its adorable sock puppet mascot. But despite its popularity and hype, Pets.com went from being a public company worth hundreds of millions of dollars to being bankrupt and liquidated in less than a year. How did this happen? What went wrong? And what can we learn from them? Let's find out. To understand the rise and fall of Pets.com, we need to go back to the late 1990s when the internet was booming and the dot-com bubble was inflating. The dot-com bubble was a period of extreme optimism, rapid growth, and speculation in the tech industry, especially in the online sector. Many internet companies emerged during this time, promising to revolutionize various industries and markets with their innovative ideas and business models. Just think about Amazon and eBay. Investors were eager to fund these startups, hoping to cash in on the next big thing. The stock market soared as these companies went public with initial public offerings or IPOs often without having any profits or revenues. One of these companies was Pets.com, which aimed to be the ultimate online destination for pet owners and lovers. Pets.com was founded in 1998 by Greg McLemore and Eva Woodsmall, who wanted to create an online pet supply retailer that would offer convenience, variety, and low prices to customers. Pets.com had a simple but ambitious mission, to be the most comprehensive source of pets products, information, and services on the web. They offered thousands of items for dogs, cats, birds, fish, reptiles, and other pets ranging from food and treats to toys and accessories. They also provided free shipping for orders over $50, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and a 24 per 7 customer service hotline. But what really made Pets.com stand out from its competitors was its marketing strategy. Pets.com invested heavily in advertising, especially on TV, where it featured its iconic sock puppet mascot. The sock puppet became a sensation, appearing on talk shows, parades, magazines, and even the Super Bowl. Pets.com also leveraged the power of celebrity endorsements, partnering with stars like Ellen DeGeneres, Whoopi Goldberg, Jerry Seinfeld, and Michael Jordan. They even had their own magazine called Pets.com Magazine, which featured articles, tips, and interviews with famous pet owners. With all this exposure and buzz, Pets.com quickly gained recognition and popularity among consumers and investors. In February 2000, Pets.com went public with an IPO that raised $82.5 million. The stock price soared from $11 to $14 on the first day of trading, valuing the company at over $300 million. But it will go wrong in a matter of months. However, behind all this hype and glamour, Pets.com was facing some serious challenges that would eventually lead to its demise. Pets.com spent a lot of money on building its infrastructure, inventory, distribution network, and customer service. It also spent a fortune on advertising, especially on TV commercials featuring the sock puppet. In fact, it spent more money on ads than it made in sales. 
in the third quarter of 2011, Pets.com reported revenues of $9.4 million but marketing expenses of $11.8 million. It's just marketing expenses. Pets.com faced stiff competition from other online and offline retailers who offer similar or lower prices for pet products. Many pet products were expensive to ship and store. As a result, Pets.com had very low profit margins on its product, sometimes even losing money on each sale. To attract and retain customers, Pets.com often offered discounts or coupons on its products, such as $10 off on orders over $50 or 20% off on selected items. These promotions further eroded Pets.com's margins and profitability. Additionally, they also reduced customer loyalty, as many customers only shopped at Pets.com when there was a deal or a coupon available. The final nail in the coffin for Pets.com was the collapse of the dot-com bubble in 2000. The dot-com bubble burst when investors realized that many of the internet companies they had funded were overvalued and unprofitable. The stock market crashed, wiping out billions of dollars in value and causing many dot-com companies to go bankrupt or be acquired. Pets.com was one of the victims of this market crash as its stock price plummeted from $14 to less than $1 in a matter of months. Facing mounting losses and dwindling cash, Pets.com decided to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in November 2000. The company announced that it would shut down its website and liquidate its assets. It also laid off most of its 320 employees leaving only a few to handle the bankruptcy process. Pets.com sold its inventory at fire sale prices, sometimes as low as 10 cents on the dollar. It also sold its domain name, logo, and trademark to PetSmart for $2.6 million, but perhaps the most valuable asset that Pets.com had was its sock puppet mascot which had became a cultural icon of the dot-com era. The sock puppet was sold to an online lender called Barnon for $125,000 who used it in their own advertising campaigns. It's described as nothing short of breathtaking, a points drop never before seen on the US market. The rise and fall of Pets.com is a classic example of the dot-com bubble's excesses and failures. It highlights how a company can go from tech industry darling to cautionary tale of business disasters in a short time. It also provides valuable lessons for today's business landscape. Pets.com fell due to unrealistic and non-profitable business model. It overlooked industry economics, market size, growth potential, and customer behavior. A successful business model should be based on realistic data, analysis, and testing, not on hype and speculation. Pets.com fell due to its excessive focus on growth and market share neglecting profitability and efficiency. It spends more money than it made, hoping to achieve economies of scale and network effects that would eventually make it profitable. But this strategy backfired when the market conditions changed and the funding was no longer available. A successful business must strike a balance between growth and profitability ensuring positive cash flow and return on investment.
Wordpress.com wasted a lot of money on marketing and advertising without having a clear value proposition or differentiation for its customers. It relied on gimmicks and promotions instead of focusing on quality and service. Additionally, it overspent without a clear budget or financial plan. If you have a business, you should invest wisely in marketing, measuring the, the effectiveness and return on investment. Pest.com failed because it was caught up in the dot-com bubble. This period created unrealistic expectations and valuations for internet companies. It also faced a sudden market crash, which destroys its stock value and investor confidence. As entrepreneurs, we should be aware of the market conditions and trends that affect our industry and customers, and be prepared to adapt and respond to changes. Do not allow external conditions to affect our business too much. So that's the story of Pets.com. It's a fascinating case study of how a company can rise and fall so quickly in the internet age. It also teaches us some important lessons about business strategy, execution, and innovation that are still relevant today. What do you think about the Pets.com story? Do you remember shopping at their site or seeing their ads? Unfortunately, I wasn't born yet when they went bust. But nonetheless, I'm still fascinated by their spectacular failure and the wisdom behind it. Anyway, that's it for Pets.com. Thanks you for watching and see you next time.